say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen in Tim and Nikki's cabin. It's very beautiful up here. It is. You know what? It's fall. Mm -hmm. And this is a recipe that we're going to uh, do because we have these things around us right. right now. But you could do this any time of year and you don't have to use these particular items because it is fall. We're having venison. That's right. We're having mushrooms. This is a fall mushroom and we take venison in yes. fall generally. But if you don't have venison, you can use beef. Mm -hmm. We like to save the tenderloins for the, the early best. part of the season because we always use the hamburger. That's right. Just recently, I got a call mm -hmm. from my neighbor, Mark and Karen. That's right. And they had found some mushrooms on the base of a white oak tree. Those are beautiful. Beautiful. I wish I'd find wonderful. those. Wonderful. Yeah. It's called Hen of the Woods. Now, there are so many mushrooms out there, but you really do have to be careful. Right. I wouldn't know. I'm glad you do. Well, it, it takes a lot of research and you have to key them out. There are a lot of good books out there. Mm -hmm. But really, if you're younger and watching this, don't ever try any of this unless you take it to right. your parent and they really know what they're doing. One of the most familiar things that we have that you can't hardly go wrong on is the puffball. Right. And they, aren't those fantastic? I thought those are really good. We made those last year about this time and we found a field full mm -hmm. of them, but they were a little bit past their Too prime. late. We missed it. Yeah. That's right. Now, this is a little bit of a woody texture. It's like a Mark, my buddy, kind of described it as, a, as an older shiitake. Mm -hmm. And these, you know, are kind of late when they found them, but they're still very delicious. Oh, yeah. Now, today, almost everything here is Kentucky. This deer right here, this tenderloin, was taken right up on the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still with Kentucky Field. It was the 2015 season, I think. And I took three deer. That's right, in, in just a week. the course of a day or <laughs> a, a day or yeah. two. We like to eat three to four deer a year. That's right. Now, things have changed a little bit since we're farming. On another note, Mo mm -hmm. is off at the processors. That's right. And he will be back shortly, so you'll be seeing some, some beef recipes. We finally got the weight bag. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you what it was? No, what did he weigh? What would you, what, what would you think, just looking at him? You were guessing six, seven hundred, and I, mm -hmm. he was big. Yeah. Well, Two million, I don't know, he was huge. <laughs> 636 pounds. Wow. He was born in late April. Wow. And this was October. Okay. So that's all that you and I need. Mm -hmm. Now that we're at this point, we have this beautiful tenderloin sitting down in front of us. We're going to make a Wellington type dish. So venison Wellington. I like exactly. that. Exactly. I like Except that. Except we're not going to use prosciutto. We don't need that. Mm -hmm. Even the mustard that we're using is a Kentucky mustard. And if you'll remember, not too long ago, we visited Sunflower Sundries, Jennifer, and she made the hominy. She also makes some wonderful stuff that's on the shelf at our favorite store, and you that's can right. find her stuff if you look for it. This it smells a, amazing. This it's is a wonderful. sherry mustard, which will go nicely yes. with this. Now, the greatest thing today is, is a lot of Kentucky ingredients. These came from our friends at... Elmwood. Elmwood Stock Farm. Lard we made ourselves from our pig. That's exactly That's right. right. So we're going to go as much Kentucky as we can here. So let's get it started. Let me turn the heat up. Let's get this burner going because we're going to brown this guy. All right, now, usually when you have a beef wellington, or in this case, a venison wellington, mm -hmm. you make you a sauce to pour with that with mushrooms. It's, oh, a red, yeah. it's a red wine reduction. So it's basically a red wine reduction that we've done before. Mm -hmm. Just we'll add a little bit. We want to thicken up a little bit more, maybe put some cornstarch in there. But... Along with this are some things that you've done before that we got, you got an idea from a restaurant. Your mashed That's potatoes right. are simply... It's got sour cream in it and it's also got horseradish the ho and basil. Unbelievable. Delicious. That's right. Just that little bit of and stuff. And a pinch of sour cream and butter too. I put oh. a little bit of everything. Well, you got to have butter. Yeah. You can put a little garlic in there too yeah. and you got yourself some magic. 
All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt, salt and pepper before I brown this. And I'm gonna put some on after too. Mm -hmm. You mean flip it for really, you? Yeah. That's a good looking piece of meat. It really is. But a lot of a lot of people, you know, talk about your venison having a strong taste. So make sure you process it properly and listen to the sound. Here we go. Yum. Ah. So I'm gonna basically do a quick brown in a hot skillet. See all those nice flavors in. It smells good. And I looked at hunting a little bit different than most people probably. A lot of people were hunting the big old bucks. I was hunting little tender does. That's right. That's all eat. about the management process. Mm -hmm. When you live in Kentucky where we ha we're blessed with a huge deer population, it's our responsibility as sportsmen to help manage that herd. If we just took big bucks and didn't take care of the does, we'd have issues. Know that if you take those deer and they're properly processed, you have some delicious right. food. I always ask for my loin hole if somebody else is cutting it up, and your processor would be glad to do that. I'm going to save this pan because I'm going to use it for just about everything today. For every little bit of frying up that I'm doing, I want to save all these juices for my final red wine reduction. Yum. All right, that's sufficiently brown for me. All right. Happy? Yes, looks good. Now let's put a little more salt and a little more pepper on there. All right. Now we don't want to overcook that in that skillet because we want to make sure, you know, our meat. Now we like ours medium rare. Everything that's in this I'm going to keep again because I want to let those flavors build right. up when we do the final reduction. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cut up some mushrooms. Alrighty. We're just going to cut these into smaller size groups. Now, could you eat these raw or no? You could. A lot of mushroom enthusiasts would. Okay. It's, it's, and like I said, it's a little more woody. Okay, now we've already got some oil in there and we already have the flavor Yum. of the deer, so if you want to go ahead and dump those in. Thank you, Mrs. Farmer. You're welcome. Now, again, these are a bit woody, a little bit tougher than what you might be used to doing your little portobellos or whatever. We're going to put just a little bit of beef broth in here. We're going to cook those down. You could steam those. You could put the top on, let those roll. All right, now we're going to season this a little bit too. Salt and pepper? Salt and pepper. So you're pretty much just cooking your mushrooms. Just cooking them down. Just getting them soft enough so we can break that up. Make a paste. These are, like I say, these are a little bit woody. Yeah. And we're going to make that paste. Now again, I can't caution you enough. You don't rely on me for sourcing your mushrooms and finding out if they're good or bad. All right, we're going to soften those up just a little bit more. And if you wanted to, you could put a little tad of wine in here. I mean, this is this is all going the same place same direction. All right, these are softening up pretty good. If you want to do the next step, that's cooled down a little bit. All right. And this is already cool. So basically what we're going to do is... Oh, smell that. I could eat oh, that. Oh, wow. So what we're going to do is, is coat this. Don't be too shy with this. Uh -huh. Then this goes in the refrigerator to cool. And we're cooling it so the pastry doesn't stick, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Now we can't stress enough. Nikki can't stress enough. She's our pastry chef. Let's talk about lard, Nikki, and what it does for it's, anything pastry-wise. It makes it's the best pastry in the world. It makes everything turn out perfect. It's I can roll. You'll see when we roll it out. It makes everything wonderful. It I can't use anything but lard. It's just a whole different. Yeah, it's deal. smooth. It's they don't fall apart. It's it's just perfect. And right, let's pop that in the fridge. All right. All right, Mrs. Farmer. Those looking good. You happy? I think so. We'll drop those in there. Food processor. Oh, that smells so good. at that. Now this needs to chill it a little bit too. All right. So let's talk about the inevitable dessert that's coming up. You are fascinated by the pumpkin roll. That's not something that happens up north. No, you don't do that. As said much, it's, it, Right. They say it's here in Kentucky, and I found a recipe in Kentucky Monthly Sullivan University. Roulade. Does. Roulade. And it looks delicious, so i got to do it. You know, and we really do make what we have around. I think that's so kind of spontaneous and when we get our bag of vegetables, we never know right. what we're going to get. So it makes you think outside the box. Mm -hmm. And you never know what you're going to stumble on in the right. woods. And you'll be digging through the freezer and you'll find this or find that. And that's this show is very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. We never know what we're going to make, usually until a day or two ahead of time. Right. And this show is about trying some grub you've never tried before, as we say in our fun little right. opening segment. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's move this stuff out of the way. Let this chill down a little bit, and let's watch you make your pastry with your beautiful lard that it's we a, rendered. It's the best. And all these things that I'm telling you about, you can easily access this on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Mm -hmm. Things that you might not have seen before. Hundreds and hundreds of recipes. Check that out. And you can access our mashed potato recipe. We're going to have Brussels sprouts. Brussels are easy. Right. And this beautiful dish coming up shortly, but let's get our pastry going. All right. Now, that's been in, in the refrigerator. Right. That's just what we do with lard. We usually, it doesn't last that long. We made a lot this time. That one was hid in the back. That's right. <laughs> so you are the pastry queen, Mickey. So Gotta have me, this. Tell us what you're doing here. Gotta have lard. And I'm just gonna take, and I never really measure, so I'm gonna take a scoop. Let's take. The dollop. It's like a couple of these scoops. That's probably a couple of tablespoons, wouldn't you say? Yeah. All right, that's what I'm gonna use to make my lard. Now that's out of our pig that we that's raised. Right. Is it not cool? I know. Gotta add sugar. Okay. I just maybe, probably a tablespoon of sugar. I'm going to add some flour. You that is use, unbleached white bread flour. Yes, and you can use whatever you want, but this I kind of like what I like. Because I'm going to use the same flour with our pastry today. So that's three quarters of yeah, a cup? Yeah, we're going to do that for now and just kind of do it. And everyone has their own pastry that they like to make. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I just like, this is my favorite with the lard and the sugar. And you'll see with the lard when we roll this out, it's smooth. Mm. That's one thing I would say about the lard. Everything's smooth. And that's what our most of our ancestors used was lard. Well, just better. Just a little bit of water. And I just kind of do it till it looks what I want. It makes it a good good pastry ball here. See how wonderful that See, is? See, it already looks like Isn't it wonderful? classic pastry. And this is what we're going to use for your venison wellington. This is going to be our pastry shell. Okay. So. Now you could, I guess you could buy a pastry you could. shell. But when why you, do that? Yeah, when you got fresh lard, you just can't do that. And for some reason, when you have lard, it makes, it doesn't break apart. It's, it's so the easy best. to work with. It's be yeah, it's just so much better. So you say we need a pig? Do you think? You're not going to go that far. I don't think we need a pig yet. Maybe in a couple years. You know what? We can go to the butchers and, and I bet they'll sell us some uh, leaf. I like that idea better. <laughs> from making our own lard. I just want to make it big enough that we'll be able to cover your piece of Roll beef. it up. All right, we got this. Okay. Well, now we need an egg wash. Always, grandmother always told me you got to have an egg wash. And we're going to use this. It's gonna, we're going to kind of line the edges with this because it's going to help it seal it. It's almost like our little bit of a glue. And then at the, we are going to put it all over the top also. And you see this isn't anything fancy. It's not like it's perfect square. But once we get it rolled up in here, we're just going to flip it over. So now that it's cooled sufficiently, and you don't have to leave it in there for long, maybe an hour, your mustard is surrounding this. Then you're going to take our mushrooms. And your mushrooms are chilled. Mushrooms are chilled, those. and we're going to put that around that, then roll it up. In here? Yeah, we'll show you. <laughs> Okay, Mrs. Farmer, since you have uh, since I'm messy. full use of both hands, All work right. up as well. I'm going to take your mushroom stuff. Oh, man. Isn't that good? Now, you think about the combined taste of a sherry mustard, wonderful homemade mushrooms, and a venison tenderloin. Are you kidding me? I know. I'm kind of just putting this all over the edges of this. What do you think? Just like that. All right. I'm going to move it, and we're gonna, I'm going to probably pull some more of these mushrooms. What do you think on here? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, ready for me to roll this? Wrap her up. All right, and turn it over. What do you think? The only thing we have to do now is bake this. Right. That didn't take the whole process. Well, it's in real time here. Right. 10, 15 minutes. Well, we got one more step. I think we should put egg wash on it and cut some slices. I think you're correct, Mrs. Right. Farmer. And this will just make it... It'll brown it up a little better. I always put some. I always like to put egg on everything. Let's give it, make it crisp up a little for us. Nice brown. Sheen. Yeah. And let's go ahead and put. What do you think? A couple of. Give it a little vent. Yeah. Let's give it some vent. That's a thing of beauty, Mrs. Farmer. Isn't it? All I gotta do is throw that in the oven. I like it. All right. All right. Let's, let's do that, up. and then let's start to think about dessert. Okay. Desserts. I love desserts. In your corner. All right, this recipe looked really good to me because mm -hmm. I like cream cheese and it had mm -hmm. cream cheese. So what we're going to make first is, this is a, you call it a roulade, is that what you called it? Mm -hmm. So it's rolled. That's a kind of rolled pastry. And that okay. can be with meat. There's actually a Wellington roulade you can do because we're not rolling yeah. the meat itself. Well, this is going to be the middle. We're going to make a, a pumpkin bread on the bottom, but this is going to be our cream that's in the middle. This is a roll. It's a tasty, tasty oh, thing. Oh, I could eat just this. So what I've done is let this cream cheese get room temperature, my whole package. All right. Do that. And then the same with the butter. I have six tablespoons of butter. I 
All right. All right. Now we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. I remember as a kid thinking, smelling that thing, boy, that smells so good. I'm going to take a little swig of that. <laughs> it's not good, is it? All right. And now our powdered sugar. And this, I know you don't like messes. I'm going to try to be careful. I'll stand back for your black sugar. You want to pour it in for me slowly? That way we'll make a mess work together. Say when you want it. Go ahead. Okay. It does look good. Ta-da! I'm gonna try it. You mm. got to. Mm. No calories in that. Mm -mm. We'll set mm. that aside for later. That's gonna go inside after we make our pumpkin soup. Oh, yeah. We're gonna throw that in the fridge <laughs> for us. Next step. It's easy. Now is our pumpkin mixture. Okay. How much of that? This is two thirds of pumpkin. And that's just canned. Canned. Hundred percent pumpkin. That's right. Check your labels if you're buying it now. Some of that stuff is. Not really pumpkin. No. Two eggs. We're actually going to use three, but we're going to save the last for the end here. All right. So I'm just going to mix this up. And our pin is still birdie. Yes, she is. Very simple. And now we need three quarters of a cup of, and this is a bread flour that we used before. All right. So put three of those in. And now we need actually about a teaspoon of soda and one cup of sugar. Some people have cinnamon, allspice, whatever you want to add. Set up a little. Let's add our last egg. So we have three eggs all together. We have to fight that. for those eggs. I know we do. All right. Now, something we're going to do here, we're actually going to cook this on a cookie sheet. This is a smaller cookie sheet, you notice. And something I like to use is wax paper. And the reason I do is that way it'll come off easier because we're going to have to roll this later. You know how long time we get that wax on there? Did it? You did this? Oh, yeah. All right, and, and how, then I had to put it on that roll. I bet. I like to do this and measure, see how we kind of make a little line here, and I'm going to cut it with my wonderful scissors. That, I love these scissors Tracy got us. These are for everything. When I used to do wedding cakes, I'd always put wax underneath too because I, that way the cake comes out and doesn't, I don't want it sticking. Mm -hmm. Now we got that perfect. All right, now this, I'm going to pour this in Should here. Should I be preheating the oven to any particular temperature? Yes, we need the oven at 350 for 25 minutes. And so you're just making it small and thin. Yeah. So I, and I suppose later on you'll put the cream cheese on top of that and roll it So up. we can roll it and that wax paper is going to help it come out easier for us. So it'll just, nothing's going to stick. Now we've had some of these and uh, you pulled them out of the freezer, so. They're pretty yummy. It can last so, a couple. So, so you leave it in the freezer? Yes. And it says they can stay in there a couple months from what I understand. So let's make 800 of these. Let's do it and just, you can eat them all day. Yeah. Let's stick it in the oven for 25 minutes. All right. That'll help you with that. That looks perfect. And it smells quite beautiful. Yes. And let's let that cool for a little bit, and then we're going to flip it out on something else so we can start rolling it. And I'm going to put another sheet on here because we're going to dump this off, and we don't want it sticking to that pan either. All right, we have not forgotten about our Venice and Wellington. We just want our dessert and everything to come together. Right. So we're going to revisit that in just a second, but it looks like that came out pretty good. See, the wax paper it. makes it wonderful. Yeah. See how it keeps it. Very nice. Nice piece of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we got to get back in the fridge and let's okay. get our mixture. Oh, yeah. See where it's going here? <laughs> <laughs> this, this looks like something you would buy in a store mm -hmm. when it's done. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing and it tastes, man, the butter and, and it's the cream easy. cheese. Just thank goodness there's only two calories per slice. Right. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect because now we're just going to roll. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Pull the wax as we go. Pull this one back up like that. All right, and I'm going to tuck it like this because we're going to put that in the freezer. That's it. That's it. And then you later on. You made that look pretty dang uneasy. You got to be careful with the wax paper. We're going to freeze that and then yeah. we're going to have perfect little slices. Let's put this in the freezer. Back to our venison Wellington with the fresh mushrooms. You remember that? Mm. Yeah. All right. All right. We have our beautiful venison Wellington out of Yum. the oven now. And we did that, I guess, around 40 minutes. Start checking your temperature. You know, a lot of people recommend that venison be about, now if it's for the hamburger and things like that, about 160 degrees. Um, if it's a loin or a roast or something like that, and you've process it yourself or know that it's been processed well, you can go 145, and we like ours yeah. a little rare, especially on this particular recipe. Now, for the reduction, you've already cut me some of our wonderful shallots. Let's go ahead and toss those in there, if you will. All right, do you want all of them? 
That was about, oh, I don't know, a small shallot. All right, and now, back to the star of the show. Right. If you'll cut me some more of this, we're gonna... Right. Some little pieces. Oh, little bigger pieces on this. Like that? Yeah. These are gonna go in here. Right. Like into that. our reduction. And you can do this however you like. Oh, does that not smell no. good? And that just by itself. It smells good. We'll make a nice little snack with it. Yes, it would. This is basically, except for the dessert, the sumptuous dessert. This is living off the land. Yes, it is. Deer and mushroom that we found right up on the hill. All right, now that everything's looking really good here, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put some red wine in here. I'd say that's probably, what, a third of a cup, mm -hmm. half a cup? I'd say. Turn that heat up in just a second. I'm gonna take a little bit of, this is just called the better than bouillon base. I'm gonna put, I don't know, a teaspoon of that in there. I'm gonna take some currant jelly. So let's say two tablespoons. You know where we're going. It smells that. really good already. I love this sauce. Now we're gonna crank this up and reduce this down. And when that thickens up, we're gonna kinda slice. Kind of slice this up. I'll tell you what, we're gonna clean this up a bit while this is reducing down and get a plate. All right. We're gonna plate this stuff. Sounds and good to me. we're gonna have a bite in a minute. Look at this beauty in front of us. I love it. The pumpkin roll, which I almost want to eat first, but mom would not be happy with me. I like your sauce. All right, let's go ahead and cut into that. It's delicious. Mm. The mushrooms. I like that. Oh. That's delicious. What a nice combo. And the sauce, it's got a little That's bit of delicious. sweet. Wow. Now these are the mashed potatoes you did a while back that have the horseradish and the right. basil. You can find those Delicious. on our timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Mm. Just gotta love you some Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you do. But now, mom has seen that I'm taking some of the main course. I guess we can so dig into dessert. That. Aren't they pretty? Mm. Mm. Oh wow. Moist and delicious. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. I love that. Mm. Where'd yours go? Mm. Okay. Now, if that doesn't scream fall, I don't know what does. It's delicious. And that's very nice. Now, we have hundreds and hundreds of dishes out there. Also, projects you might want to build, how-to stuff, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Great way to check out some things we've done in the past you might not have seen. Recipes, how-tos. And if you haven't become our Facebook friend, it's very simple. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, hit like. This is not a personal page, so just hit like, and you're already there. You don't have to do a friend request or anything like that. Boom, like, you're in, and we can talk. That's right. We have a lot of good <laughs> friends out there that we talk to every week. This has been an interesting day in the yes, kitchen. It, yes, it has. has. It not? I want more. Mrs. Farmer, you outdid yourself on the pumpkin stuff there. I love your, I love your venison. And now comes the point where, you know, Mom said not to talk with your mouth full. Okay. So we don't want to... Don't want to upset her. Don't want to upset mom. That's right. She watches, you know. That's right. So before we jump into this plate, we just want to say it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week on ah. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. A piece mm -hmm. of meat. Mm -hmm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.